Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how to implement end-to-end -end heart disease prediction project using machine learning algorithm. According to World Health Organization statistics, cardiovascular disease is a leading cause of death in the world. Cardiovascular diseases were responsible for 32% of all global deaths in 2019. Heart attacks and the strokes were responsible for 85% of these deaths in this case. The low and middle income countries account for more than three quarters of all cardiovascular deaths. So, in this project, uh, we have created a web application using a Flask and the prediction model using different machine learning models. Here, uh, the patient can fill his basic details like age, gender, chest pain, cholesterol level, etc. And then uh, the model will predict the heart disease for the given input. To build the machine learning model, we have used different algorithms like logistic regression, support vector machine, decision tree, random forest and k nearest neighbor algorithms. The user can also print the report for tracking the disease. You can follow this link to download the complete source code of the project. So once you download the project, you will get the source code, the data set, the documentation parts like PPT and the report. I will paste this link in the description below so that you can easily download the project. Now, once you download the project, you will get the following content like you will get the data set. Uh, these two file folders contains uh, the HTML files uh, which are required for the Flask application. This is the Flask application actually. This is the complete uh, PowerPoint presentation. These two files contains the report uh, both in Word as well as the PDF. This is the file where the actual code is present, that is a hard disease prediction. This is .py file. The same uh, content has been stored with uh, IPython notebook uh, version also. Models.pkl is the pre-trained model here. Uh, if you want to train, you can train it uh, by yourself. Otherwise, you can use this particular model for predicting the disease for the new patients here. The readme is the file which contains all the necessary instructions to install the libraries as well as the software. Finally, the requirements.txt contains uh, the required libraries to be installed to run this uh, project here. To run this project, uh, first uh, we will install the necessary libraries. Uh, for that reason, uh, we will create the Conda environment that is also known as a virtual environment here. To create the virtual environment, we will use this command that is uh, create Conda minus n hdp. Here, HDP is the name of the virtual environment here. Once uh, the virtual environment is created, we need to activate it with the help of uh, Conda Activate HDP. Once the virtual environment is activated, we need to install the required libraries. The list of uh, required libraries are present in uh, requirements.txt. So, we can install them with the help of this command. That is uh, pip install minus r requirements.txt in this case. Now, once uh, we have installed the required uh, uh, libraries, uh, we will open the Jupyter Notebook, that is the Jupyter Notebook in this case. Once you open the Jupyter Notebook, uh, you will see all the files uh, in the current working directory, that is the project folder actually. Now, here uh, uh, we can see the data set. Once you open the data set folder, we will get the CSV file. The CSV file contains uh, the data something like this. There are totally 14 columns are there. Out of that, first 13 are the features and the last one is the target here. Wherever one is there, the meaning of this one is the patient is having uh, the heart disease. Wherever there is a zero, the meaning is the patient is not having disease in this case. Now, I will open this uh, heart disease prediction dot ipython notebook so that I can train the model here. So, this is how the source code of the project uh, looks like. Uh, initially, we need to import the required libraries like uh, NumPy. Pandas, Matplotlib, uh, and then we need to import uh, the different uh, uh, libraries from uh, sklearn. The first thing is uh, train test split to divide the data set into training and testing. To pre process the given data, we need the standard scalar. Accuracy score is required to calculate the accuracy of the model. To display the classification report of the model, we need the classification report. We need to import all these things from sklearn. Similarly, we need to import the different uh, models what we want to build like a K nearest neighbor classifier, support vector, decision tree, random forest and logistic regression in this case. Once you import all the li necessary libraries, uh, next step is to read the data and then pre-process the data. 
Here I have used read underscore CSV to read the data. Once you read the data, it is available in heart data here. Next, I have displayed the information about the data here. You can notice there are totally 14 columns are there. Out of that, uh, first 0 to 12, they are the features and 13th is the target variable here. And there are totally 1025 rows are there. None of them contains the null values here. Now we will discuss uh, how can we describe the data like uh, what, are, what is the number of examples are there, what is the mean, standard deviation and minimum with the help of uh, this function that is uh, hard data dot describe here. Next we need to uh, count how many number of uh, missing values are there. If there are a missing values we need to handle them as well as we need to find are there any duplicate values. If there are uh, duplicate rows are there we need to handle them also. So this uh, uh, line will give you how many number of uh, null values are there. You can notice here there are 0% null values are there. So that's the reason uh, we don't need to handle the null values here. Again, we have removed all the duplicates with the help of uh, this particular uh, line in this case. Next, I have calculated the correlation between the different features of this uh, heart disease data. Uh, I don't find any correlation between the two features. So that's the reason there is no need to remove any of the features in this case. If two features are correlated, there is no point in considering two features. We need to consider one and the remaining feature will be removed in that case. So in this case, uh, all the features are independent. There is no correlation between those things. So that's the reason I will consider all 13 features for uh, training the model in this case. Now uh, we need to divide our data into two parts. So that is uh, training and testing. Before that, we need to divide our data into X and Y where X contains all features and Y contains uh, the target here. Uh, next, I have used the train test split to, to divide this X and Y into X train, X test, Y train, Y test. Again, I have displayed all those uh, uh, variables in this case. The next step is to build the models. Uh, first, I have built the model that is a KNN here. Whenever we want to build the KNN uh, model, uh, it's very difficult to uh, set the number of neighbors here. So that's the reason what I have done in this case is I have considered the value of K in the range of uh, 2 to 21. And then I have trained the k-nearest neighbor classifier here. So for each of them, I have drawn the result in this case. You can notice if the value of uh, k is equal to 2, I am getting 48% accuracy. Whenever the value of k is equal to 11, I am getting 70% accuracy here. Whenever the value of k is equal to 15, again I am getting 70%. That is the maximum. So what you can say here is uh, for this given data, the value of k is 11. That is the best suitable value you can say. Coming back to the next model that is uh, the support vector machine, uh, you can notice here I have used different kernels like linear, polynomial, RBF as well as the sigmoid. Again, I have trained this uh, support vector machine for each of these uh, kernels and I have displayed the result for the first one that is a kernel of zero that is nothing but what linear kernel here. I got 79% of accuracy here. Similarly, you can display it for other kernels also. I have displayed the result in the form of a graph here. You can notice. For linear, I got 79% accuracy. For polynomial, RBF and sigmoid, I got 69, 66 and 55% accuracy respectively here. So for the given data set, linear kernel is the best for the support vector machine in this case. Coming back to the next one that is decision tree. Again, in this case, uh, it's very difficult to uh, understand whether I, I need to consider all features or not. So that's the reason what I did is I have considered one feature at a time and then two feature at a time. And then I have built the model. Uh, you can notice here for one feature, I am getting 66% of accuracy. For two features, 70% accuracy and so on. The best uh, accuracy, I am getting it for all 13 features. So that's the reason uh, it is better to consider all features in this case also. So again, you can notice here for each of uh, the possibility, like one feature, two feature and all, I have displayed the accuracy in the form of a graph here. Coming back to the next algorithm that is known as a random forest. Uh, in random forest, uh, again, there is one question we need to understand, like how many number of uh, trees we need to consider in each case. Like, uh, shall we go with the 10 trees, 20 trees and so on. So for that reason, I have set the estimator is equal to 10, 20, 100, 200 and 500 here. For each of these things, I have trained the random forest uh, classifier. And then uh, with the help of this particular part of code, I have displayed the accuracy here. You can notice here whenever we have 10 estimators, uh, we got the accuracy as 82%. That is the maximum compared to other estimators here. So for uh, the given data set, 10 estimators are enough because we are getting maximum accuracy in this case. 
Coming back to the last model that is known as logistic regression. Again, I have trained the logistic regression on the given data uh, and I got 79% of accuracy in this case. Finally, we need to save the models whatever we have built till now. Uh, that is done with the help of uh, pickle library here. Uh, I have opened the models.pkl in write mode and then I have saved all the models. The file name uh, is models.pkl in this case. Finally, I have checked whether the models are saved correctly or not with the help of uh, uh, this particular part of the code. You can notice here all the five models are saved correctly in this case. Now, once you save all your models, uh, uh, we have done with the training part. We have created the trained model here. The next step is to build the, uh, you can say that Flask application. So to build this Flask application, uh, you will find the code in uh, app.py here. So this is how the code will look like. I have imported the necessary libraries here. And then I have started the Flask application. And then I have loaded the model, what we have built here. Later, I have created the few, uh, the templates like what should be the uh, home page how the about us page look like and how the predict page look like all those particular things are available in the template folder here next uh, what we need to do is we need to understand how to run this application if you want to run the application uh, we need to open the anaconda prompt here and then we need to type python space app.py once you execute this uh, app.py that is a flask app you will get this uh, url this is the server where the Flask app is running. So what we can do is we can copy this particular URL and then paste it into a browser here. Once you open this particular uh, URL, you will get the home page of this uh, application. So in this case, so you can see here, this is the uh, project title. Here it is asking you to enter the basic details like name, email, and then uh, it is asking you to select the gender, uh, chest pain, resting blood pressure, and so on. All these things uh, we need to enter. Once you enter all this particular data, finally, we need to press the submit button. Once you enter the submit button here, uh, we have already entered all the parameters here. Based on that particular parameters, uh, it will display the result here. So these are the parameters what we have entered. And you can see here, the overall result is 40%. That is the 40% chance that you have uh, a heart disease. And then uh, you can see the detailed model predictions like uh, what model has predicted what uh, level of uh, the heart disease here. The random porous has uh, predicted like a low chance of heart disease. Logistic regression has predicted again low chance. Decision tree and SBC has predicted high chance and K nearest neighbor has predicted low chance here. So this is how each of the models are predicting the heart disease for the given parameters in this case. And overall it is a 40% chance that the patient is having heart disease in this case. And if you want to print this uh, particular report, you can click on this uh, click to generate report. You will be able to print the report also. So this is how uh, we can build an end to end uh, heart disease uh, prediction model using machine learning as well as the Flask application. If you want to download the complete uh, source code along with the documentations, you can follow the link given in the description below. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.